stupid. It takes away my discomfort, let's call it. It does enhance my very being. Where do you think you'd be if you didn't get to smoke it, like even with your pain? <laughs> I would have found a way. How does the training and education of medical doctors today work against the acceptance of prescribing marijuana as medicine? Well, it works against them because they're brought right from the beginning, right into the fold of the pharmaceutical industry. We're reading journals, they're reading these advertisements, or they're reading papers on drugs that were financed by the drug companies, or they're being seduced by the companies. Fancy dinners, a trip for a weekend, would you like to have 18 rounds of golf? And some of them get outright money from the drug companies. I've met doctors who said when they first came out of medical school, they didn't know what to do. It was really overwhelming. They had live patients in front of them who needed help. They were very happy to have representatives tell them what medicines would be best for their patients. So doctors uh, have a bias toward the products of pharmaceutical industries. They do not readily accept the idea that a simple plant or herb may be useful. I don't know if they think it's hocus pocus, I just think they don't feel that there's the kind of testing that they're used to. That's the problem we have. What I try to impress upon these people is, is we're trying to put the science into it. And yet some people are very resistant to even attempts to do that. All of the funding is coming directly or indirectly from the drug companies. And these people obviously, for obvious reasons, are determining the agendas. Now think of the lobbying potential behind the most profitable industry in the United States. Think of the power. And do they get their way? Why can't we explore its medicinal potential? Why can't we use it to make more products? To myself and people involved in this business, it stopped making sense a long time ago. The uh, common uh, response is really the medical marijuana is a stocking horse for legalizing it. And uh, so what? <laughs> what do they want? We should be making use of this plant. And really, that's all I can say. Um, the, the restriction, the prohibition is all, in my mind, just stupidity. And I don't condone stupidity. And that's a problem. How do politicians, after years of promoting claims of marijuana's harms, pushing for larger drug war budgets, Constructing political platforms based on a stance that vilifies marijuana and being lobbied by big business, how do these same politicians now reverse their stance? What politician can come before their constituents today and say marijuana should be decriminalized when yesterday they said it was evil and dangerous? Their constituents are gone and want to know why you changed your mind. Were you lying to us or were you stupid? Either way, you're not getting elected next time. Whoops, we made a mistake. You 17 million people should not have been arrested. Some of you jail, some of you fine, some of you lost the handle on your career. One way to bypass this problem in the face of ever-growing empirical evidence is to divert attention. Add a word, medicinal. Put the word medicinal in front of marijuana and you are now talking about something completely different if you're a politician. Why is there a perception that healthy people are affected differently and unable to fend off the detrimental consequences? Whereas a person with a lowered immune system or terminal illness seems to experience none of these effects? Some people go home at the end of the day and they drink to kind of wash away the day, you know, just like, ah, oh, that was a hard day, I need a few drinks, relax, kick back. So is that relieving pain? Maybe. Um, or is it pursuing pleasure? I don't know. So if you think about this in the context of cannabis, it also has relevance. The government's a lot more likely to forgive cannabis use if it's for relief from pain. If it's in pursuit of pleasure, that's a problem. And I think that points to something about our culture that's a little bit odd. What works for one doesn't necessarily work for another. The father-son confrontation. Mom smokes like a chimney. And you have a drink every day and smoke too. It's not the same. Why not? You can get cancer. Your liver can rot away. They believe today 
And I'm disappointed in the media that it hasn't brought this information, this new information to the people of this country more than it has. They believe that marijuana could well turn out to be the most dangerous drug that is in use in our country today. If you're a politician, you can get elected on a get tough on crime platform. We're going to lock up all the marijuana cultivators for a long time because you're preying on the fears of the public. Spokesmen for giant special interest groups, whether those special interest groups be law enforcement or whether they're private prisons or whether they're pharmaceutical companies or whether they're oil companies. We have spokesmen for gigantic corporations that are trying to calm us and get us to press the right button in the voting booth. Everybody that gets in has their own agenda. They're beholden to their own lobbyists, so they don't go in and check the work of anybody before them. That's not their job, because God forbid somebody come in there and check what they do afterwards. I understand why politicians may be reluctant to act on their principles, but our politicians need to read their own polls, because this is one of those cases, and it happens a lot in, in life, where the people are ahead of their leaders. Hamfest the largest event for cannabis in the world, a showcase of modern-day hemp. Sure, they used the stuff 70 years ago, but what good is hemp in a world like today? A world that appears to have everything it needs. It opens a whole new market. It opens a whole new market on every level. You can harvest off the seeds, you can harvest out the inner pulp and, and the long stem fibers. The fiber itself is the strongest natural fiber in the world. All the clothes I'm wearing today for this interview are, are hemp. All the clothes I actually always wear are made out of hemp. Been so since probably 94 when I realized I could buy clothes made out of organic fibers that lasted longer than cotton. You can eat hemp seeds and it contains all the essential amino acids and fatty acids. It makes fuel, you can make biodiesel out of it. Hemp is an excellent source for biofuel. When you grow hemp for fuel, every crop unleashes a huge amount of oxygen into the environment. In, in fact, the same amount of oxygen that you lose when you burn it off, you gain back. So it's a closed cycle, ending the greenhouse effect. There are so many hundreds of strains of industrial hemp that you can grow hemp almost anywhere in the world. Not everywhere in the world, but almost everywhere in the world. So just that alone makes it a resource for, for fuel. That is the solution, is to stop using fossil fuels and nuclear energy. Stop using them entirely and using wind and wave and sun more and these biofuels. People will get it, especially as the gas prices go up. It's the, the highest quality paper uh, there is. I mean, it's archival quality. The words tree-free paper don't make sense to people. Yeah. Hemp paper that you find in the mu museums that are hundreds of years old haven't even yellowed. To supplement the, the wood, we could solve the deforestation problem. Why isn't it cost-effective to use hemp versus um, the forest industry right now? Um, the simple answer is because you can't grow the hemp in uh, the United States. As far as human beings are concerned, it's probably one of the most useful plants ever, if not the most useful plant ever, and it's illegal. <laughs> Industrial hemp is not a drug, though it is of the same species as marijuana. It is a completely different variety of plant similar to comparing a Chihuahua with a St. Bernard. You can't get high from industrial hemp, but you can get high from marijuana. This is the only industrialized country in the world that doesn't grow industrial hemp. I mean, think how crazy it is that we can eat the product, we can sell the product, we can, we can, we can wear the product, we can export the product, import it, manufacture it, everything but grow it. We can't grow this thing. It's criminal. And there you have it. After two years of research, our quest for answers has only left us with more questions. And the only thing that really seems to make sense is that none of it makes any sense. It's a weird thing that you do when you make nature against the law. We're worried about things going extinct, and yet the policy on the most useful plants in the world is that they should all be eliminated and driven to extinction. Absolutely, they should still be concerned about youngsters using it. But we're concerned about youngsters using alcohol, tobacco, driving automobile, whatever. But that it should be the kind of prohibition that it is now, 
rather than regulation, it cannot be sustained in a, in a rational society. I believe it would be more ignorant of me to listen to somebody who's trying to oppress me than it would be to just ignore the ignorant and, and go on with what I think is right. Even now, this interview is being conducted. I smoke pot all morning. This is what I look like high. There's a great quote that uh, life is uh, a tragedy to those who feel and a comedy to those who think. And if you are a thinker and you look at the marijuana situation and you're not laughing, you're fucking dumb. Do you think marijuana will ever be legalized in Canada or the United States? Yes. I don't, I don't know about the United States, but it will be legalized in Canada. I won't be alive to see it. I used to believe it was right around the corner uh, back in the 1970s. Check out the gray hair. Uh, I confess to being 61. Uh, I believe it will happen. I didn't used to. Uh, as recently as two or three years ago, I was convinced it was not going to happen in my lifetime. I wish you didn't ask me that question, but, uh, but I would say I think it will be. It's always a possibility. It's, you know, there can be breakthroughs to reason. All we have to do to end it is get 50% of Congress plus one human being to say it's over, and it's over. There's a movement in this country, and some people have more faith in it than, than I do. Uh, I've, maybe from hosting Fear Factor all those years, I've lost my faith in human beings and, and their intelligence. I think it's inevitable. I believe that the truth will set us free, and I think the truth is infectious, and I think that while cannabis per se is not addictive, learning about it quickly becomes. When I published Marijuana Reconsidered, uh, I, in the last chapter, predicted that once people understood these things about marijuana, the prohibition would be gone. It would be gone in 10 years. Carl Sagan, who was a very good friend of mine, read the manuscript, and he said, Lesty, pessimistic, 10 years? <laughs> you know, well, here we are, you know, uh, uh, 45 years later, and nothing has happened. Nonetheless, it can't help but happen. I mean, you can't sustain a lie like that forever. program is rated 